Claymore's to make magic for the most loyal fans in the world. Frankfurt Galaxy are the team that they're up against, and the atmosphere is quite incredible. And speaking of atmospheres, a man who knows all about isobars, barometric pressure, and all that, an old cohort, Lloyd Quinnan. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Paul. How are you? I'm fine, Lloyd. How did you make it here today? I mean, you're glad you came? Very glad I came. Wish I'd been here earlier in the season, actually. It's quite an experience. Quite an experience. Well, when you say it's quite an experience, what does that mean? Well... I've never seen so much entertainment, I've never seen so many people having so much fun before a sporting event before. And I'm just sad that I haven't been here earlier in the season. The refreshments are great, the entertainment's great, and the atmosphere's fabulous. Lloyd, thanks a lot. A little bit later on, it's going to be highlights of Amsterdam Admirals hosting Bobby Hammond's London Monarchs and the Barcelona Dragons flying up to Dusseldorf to match flame for flame with the Ryan Fire. And later on, we reveal the lucky winner of our World Bowl competition. The Claymore's news for this week, touchdown Tim Barnett has returned early to the States. Lee Williamson's replacement at quarterback is number seven, Jim Ballard, a one-time London Monarch. And filling in for the injured Jocelyn Borgella on defense is Rodney Thomas, number 30, from the Ottawa Rough Riders of the Canadian Football League. Both the Scots and the Frankfurters fervently want to win this one. For Galaxy, it's the next rung on the World Bowl ladder, and the Claymores just want their home fans to exult in victory at Murray Field. The Claymores won the coin toss and elected to receive, thereby mounting the first drive of the game. Your commentators are Nick Holling and Mike Carlson. And Darren Alcorn gets things underway. A high kick fielded at the eight by de Grappenried. He goes straight up the middle, gets past one blocker, and gets over the 30-yard line. Another good return for de Grappenried. And the pressure's on for Matt Blundin, who is playing hurt. He has a serious left knee problem. Jim Kreiner was saying before the game, we just don't know how far this fella can take us. And if he goes down, the guy they've signed to fill in for him is Jim Ballard, the London Monarchs backup quarterback. So Matt Blundin takes over just inside his own 35-yard line on first down. Dropping back to pass and going long straight away and got a man. And de Graffen Reed gets in for a touchdown and the Claymores start off hot. And DeGraffenry's working just one-on-one. -on -one. Blunden gets great protection because he's back there and has enough time to let DeGraffenry get open. And the ball's right there, leads him perfectly. And Jack Kellogg, one of the top cornerbacks in the World League, is the guy who was beaten. Sean Conley will kick the extra point for the Claymores. And a great start. The Claymores on top by seven. They don't know what they in for, baby! DeGraff and Reed and Blunden serving up the fastest touchdown in World League history. Frankfurt received another blow when starting quarterback Paul Justin sprained his ankle on Galaxy's first offensive play. Backup quarterback Brad Bretz took the field, and we pick up the action again on his first play with Galaxy at midfield. They stay on the ground. Nate Bolton gets the carry once again. Bolton gets close to first down yard. It's brought down short. Turns outside, gets a first down, manages to run around outside of Rodney Thomas, down to the 40-yard line, first down Frankfurt. Rasher and Werner Hitler swap sides. They stay with Bolton on the ground, who takes a couple of steps back to get the running room he needs and picks up around seven yards. George Coghill on the stop, the safety man. And a fake... Rex goes, he's got Mario Bailey, it's a touchdown, Frankfurt. What a sensational start here at Murrayfield. Nice fake, that's what makes the play. The play action fake, and then it's Bailey one-on-one. -on -one. And he beat the new man, Thomas, the cornerback. Safety couldn't get over in time. Another touchdown, and look at that fake. Now he holds the ball in there really well. Nobody saw it. And then just lets it go. Now that's casual. Look at that. And a first World League touchdown. Not casual anymore for Brad Bretz. Darren Alcorn, who's perfect on extra points, nails his 22nd consecutive extra point. Boer sprung Dirk Technik. The Germans quickly back on level terms, and they kept up the pressure at the end of the first quarter with Bretz moving his team downfield, hitting first Bobby Olive for 14 yards. And then Super Mario Bailey hooked this one for 10 yards. But the drive stalled out. 
And after the change of ends at the start of the second quarter, Darren Alcorn came on to kick from 27 yards, and it looked like three more points for Frankfurt. However, in the first of several over-busy refereeing calls, Claymore James Williams was ruled to have roughed the kicker. Galaxy got another chance, decided to forget that field goal and go for a touchdown. Bolton's got the ball, gets back to the five-yard line. Darrell Lewis is there. Flag comes in late. They switched sides again, the Galaxy. Strong side left. Bolton gets it left and goes in for the touchdown. They got there eventually. And you thought you heard Ernie Scott? They're ruling him down short. Still the Claymores have held. <laughs> Brian Jones saved a touchdown there. Certainly everybody on the Galaxy sideline thought that was a touchdown. It was close. You heard, you heard Ernie Scottner talking about the line getting down and driving them out. And you see how they stand up. Scotland stands up the Frankfurt line. And you see now there's lots of room for the backs to come up. Bolton goes down right there. His knee's down. It's a good call. It brings up third down. Bolton this time goes in, and it's a touchdown, Frankfurt. It had to happen. Darren Alcorn's point after conversion was successful for Galaxy. A clutch of penalties killing off a great Claymore's defensive stand. Galaxy seven points out in front, 14 to seven. Matt Blunden couldn't get things going for the Claymores, tripped up by German national player Frank Mesmer, forcing the Scots to go three and out. Galaxy take over the ball in great field position at the 50-yard line after a lackluster Claymore punt. They fake to Ingo Seibert. That buys Brett's time. who has got Bobby Olive over the middle. And Olive beat the coverage of James Williams and picks up around 22 yards and another Galaxy first down. First down, Brett's dropped back to pass. A little swing pass to Bolton, who does well to pick it up. Skips past Darrell Lewis and will be close to a first down. Corris Irvin eventually there to make the stop. Ingo Seibert, number 24, is the lone setback. A German who scored against Scotland the first time these two teams met. And they give to Seibert, who runs into trouble. A couple of flags come down. And Seibert is nailed at the line of scrimmage. Alan Young and Gerald Jeffcoat combining. And two flags on the field. Brett drops, fires, caught. Bobby Olive's got it, spins one way, spins the other. The ball comes loose, and it's gone out of bounds. And about, in fact, they're, they're ruling it a fumble. George Coghill and Corris Irvin combined, and they're calling it a fumble and giving it Scotland's way. Here comes Olive on Corris Irvin. He just turns inside. You see, Irvin doesn't react to the first turn. He's still laying off him. And now it's a one-on-one. -on -one. And Bobby Olive's going to have a little fun here. And he goes for the corner. And he tries to go over the top and put the ball down. And you fumble the ball through the end zone. It goes over. That's the right call. Well, Bobby Olive coming up with one of the most curious plays we've seen in the World League this year, and still confusion on both sides. Looked like the spike before the touchdown. Here's the official call. Tom White will explain all. We had no all. touchback. Illegal forward pass thrown from behind the line of scrimmage on the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. The result of the play will be first down, one and goal. So it's an incomplete forward pass beyond the line of scrimmage after all that. An illegal forward pass is what rather. they're calling it. I don't think that was his intention at all. I don't know how you can call it a forward pass when there's no one for him to pass it to. He's just trying to put it down. That's a fumble. And nothing working for the Scottish Claymores. It's first down. Brett fires. Got a man. Mike Bellamy wide open. Touchdown Frankfurt. And this crowd don't like that. Darren Alcorn will attempt to convert the extra point 24 in a row if he gets it safe no problem 24 in a row for Alcorn 21 unanswered points for the Frankfurt Galaxy but this one leaves a sour taste in the Scottish Claymore's mouths Mike Bellamy the H-back had three touchdown catches against Amsterdam you see the play action fake to Seibert no one even touches him and Bellamy's all on outside, coming inside out. The referee's having trouble deciding who to penalize. The Claymore's fortunes didn't get any better when giant tackle Tom Scott, here in the middle of the picture, was injured and had to leave the field. A big loss for the Scottish offensive line, but fortunately he was not badly injured. 
then Sean Conley fumbled a punt attempt, and that gave Galaxy excellent field position one more time, just at the two-minute warning. Bretz then moved the Galaxy quickly downfield, hitting Bobby Olive for a 20-yard gain, and taking it himself on the scramble to bring Galaxy down to the Claymore's 10-yard line. Then he linked up with tight end Bob Brasher for another Frankfurt touchdown. The point after for Galaxy was no good, but the score was still 27 to 7. With seconds left in the first half, Claymore Troy Ridgely was ejected for unsportsmanlike conduct, which apparently meant he disagreed with another call by the refs. They said the Claymores were stalling Galaxy's attempt at a field goal. In the end, Galaxy did get that kick away between the uprights, Darren Alcorn making good from 25 yards, and that put Frankfurt ahead 30 to 7 at the end of the half. The Claymores had to try and concentrate and bite their tongues. Even Claymores coach Doug Williams was officially warned. Join us after the break to see if the Claymores can regain their composure in the second half. Welcome back. The Claymores showed some fighting spirit at the start of the second half when Galaxy quarterback Brad Bretz threw it up for grabs and Claymore safety George Cockhill intercepted and reached the 42. Cockhill has shown consistently skillful play all season long for the Claymores. Terry Carge came in at quarterback to replace Matt Blunden. Carge gives to Stacy, who gets to the line of scrimmage, dances past, and picks up eight tough yards. And that was an impressive run from Stacy. Second and short. Carge goes upstairs, looks for Daryl Mitchell. Got him! Touchdown, Scotland! They needed that early in this second half. And Karj made it look very simple, and so too did Daryl Mitchell. So, two points. Coming up. Karj under centre. Takes a drop, pressure comes, he looked for Saran Stacey, just overthrown. The idea was right, if Stacey could have got it, he would have had some running room and could have got in, but it didn't happen. But a thrilling Claymore comeback, nevertheless, fueled by a confident Terry Carge at quarterback. The Scots kept the momentum going their way, forcing Frankfurt to punt. Marcus Thomas caught the ball, and he meant business. Marcus Thomas fields at the 45, breaks past one guy, still on his feet. Now he's got some room to run, and he could be gone. It's Darren Alcorn that stops him, but the Claymores are fired up this second half. If you thought they were going to give it up, forget it. They're hot. The revival continued with more scrambling from Terry Carge, the Jimmy Johnson of the Scottish squad, and that put them well into striking distance. But wide receiver Lee Harris couldn't bite on the end zone bullet that Carge threw, and Scotland had to settle for a three-pointer from 27 yards by Sean Connolly. Good. It nearly went wide. Sean Connolly breathed a sigh of relief. Scotland were only 14 points behind. Terry Carge created more magic for the Claymores on his next drive, eluding a handful of Galaxy tacklers and scampering forward to just shy of a first down. But his bubble burst when he was picked off by Cecil Doggett, ending the third quarter with time running out for a Scottish resurgence. Late in the fourth quarter, Galaxy sealed it when Nate Bolton broke free from the Claymore D for a searing 42-yard run, dodging tacklers and nearly outrunning the Claymores down to their 10-yard line. On the next play, German national player Ingo Siebert drove a nail into the Scots' coffin, using his power and a little spin move to batter it in and put the game beyond Scotland. New quarterback Jim Ballard came on in the dying seconds and got a consolation score, hitting Lee Harris in the end zone. And then they went for a two-point conversion to Dwayne Chandler to make the final score a little more respectable, 37 to 24. Even though they profited from most of the referees' calls and ended the game 13 points ahead, Ernie Stautner and his troops had really felt the Claymore's cutting edge. I'll tell you, this is a very good team. I knew coming in here we were going to have a tough time because they're, they're excellent defense. And we started out very well, and then when we stumbled in the second half, we gave them hope again. And when you give a, a team like this hope, who is a very good defensive team, you're going to have a tough time. We did have a tough time. The first half, we, we kind of let our emotions get to us and let the game get away from us a little bit. And when you start doing that, you know, not concentrating on your assignments, then, then you know, things work against you. And they got a couple of scores in there that, um, you know, we helped them with. But I, I, we talked it over at halftime, and the guys showed me what they were made of, the way they came back in the second half and, and uh, really fought and battled and 
and I was very, very proud of their second half effort. Next port of call, Amsterdam, as the Monarchs sought to sink one lucky Claymore's fan as World Bowl bound. Here are Coach Kreiner's top three TDs. Hi, my choice is for the winners of the World Bowl touchdown competition in reverse order are Kevin Williams of the Frankfurt Galaxy. Scores on a textbook play where he gets great blocking, breaks the line of scrimmage, two tackles, and then outruns the secondary for an outstanding touchdown in their opening ball game. Next, we get an interception here where Borgella intercepts a pass, pitches to George Coghill. He tight ropes the sideline for a touchdown for the Claymores. And the winner is Kelly Sims on an outstanding interception for the Amsterdam Admirals where he breaks several tackles, scores a touchdown to tie the game and give them a chance to win it against the Barcelona Dragons. And would you believe it? Out of all of the entries that we had, no one guessed the same ones that I did, but the closest one was Ruby Gordon, who selected D, B, and E. Ruby, you're going to the World Bowl in Amsterdam. Ruby is from Salt Colts, Ayrshire. And Ruby, I'll see you there. Congratulations. Now, when you go to see an American football game, you get all kinds of entertainment. A pregame party, the game itself, and the cheerleaders, relentless and tantalizing in their efforts to whip up team spirit. The Claymore's cheerleaders were voted number one in the World League by the British and European Cheerleaders Associations, and it's not hard to see why. Ramona Braganza is the choreographer of the Claymore's cheerleaders, a 10-year line captain with the L.A. Raiderettes, but she loves her Scottish lassies. I think they have a great sense of humor. They're very, um, they're very excited to be part of an American uh, football game, and so it's, it's, they're like my girls, and I get to form them into beautiful cheerleaders. Now, are they anything like the cheerleaders you're used to back home in L.A.? They, um, they're like a, 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 probably a beginning level. A lot of girls, when they first start on the squad, they're a little nervous. They have not as much confidence. And then by the second year, third year, they blossom into, into a great squad. So they, they have that potential, I think. Potential? I'll say. Squad talked about how they felt about their new earned title. You're world number one now. How do you feel about that? Well, I think we've worked hard for it, and I do think we're good. We work well as a team. You gonna be back next year? Most definitely. <laughs> great fun, good experience, and great fun. Yes, it's been brilliant. It's been really good. <laughs> No one wanted to give the Claymores home fans a win more than the Claymores themselves, but it wasn't to be. Nevertheless, a gutsy performance. Next week, they're off to fight the old enemy once again down on their turf in London. We'll be there, and we'll be here next Thursday night on Scottish for World League American Football. Join us. Get your rocks off, honey, shaking now, now.